joined by two men here from the Sligo team who will be in the at Crow Park this Saturday for the Nicky Rackard Cup final manager Dotty Han and Captain James Weir. Gentlemen, how are you getting on? That's about it, isn't it? The excitement around the county, the excitement within the team. How how would you describe it? Only a few days out from the final now, James. I suppose it's good enough. Like there seems to be a lot of talk about it. More and more people seem to be talking about the final this year than the world last year. Like people seem to be more excited about it. They're all kind of talking about going up for this last year. There wasn't really much talk about it. No one really had much interest in going. Like for yourself, Dahi, how have you seen the team there the last few days? Well, look, see. Well, James is kind of probably more in it because he's with the clubs and you know I kind of removed from club business at the minute so um, yeah I mean in terms of local media and the papers have definitely latched on I think we've caught everyone by surprise I don't think anybody thought that we'd be in the position that we would be this year coming up from from the Mar last year um, and I was just thinking about there this morning like, like 18 months ago at the start of the National League in 2018 like it was the worst ranked hurling team in the country because it goes in league standards from the previous year. So um, if someone could correct me if I'm wrong there, but I was, that's what I was told. Um, so I suppose it, we've kind of made huge strides in the 18 months in terms of where we've come from and what we've done. And uh, I mean, I looked at the poster last night in our own dressing room about the, the results that the lads have gained over the, the last, say, five or six weeks. And like, there's been some serious good wins there you know um, and if you compare that like we, we played our, the likes of our man throwing challenge games <clears throat> before Christmas time and I suppose they were the, the springboard for us kind of realising the, the pace of the game how much quicker it was at this level and also the standard too so you know they were they were hugely beneficial to us and um, the lads have kind of they, they copped onto that really early and they've just worked their, their socks off since then you know You said there no one gave you a chance before the competition started off and like when you looked at the group there you had Loud playing them away and Tyrone and Mayo two teams that would have felt they had a good chance of reaching the final yeah. just looking at that first game against Loud you know a difficult team to face I know I think it was only three years ago Sligo played them in the Larry Mare Cup final yeah. Loud beat them Yeah. to get over that game how big of a win was that to set the foundations for the rest of this tournament um, I don't think for the likes of James or them that would have been a big deal but I would say for more the senior players I'd say it would have been massive psychologically because Loud would have been uh, one of those grounds or places that you would have went or even if they're playing in McCroker in the finals or whatever that's, they would have had that kind of edge over them um, upstairs but the group that James has come up with say in the last two or three years in, in minors and under 20s under 21s they don't have that fear um, because they've played in all sorts of competitions and they've, they've played against big teams so I suppose the younger lads I would have felt anyway would have, would have kind of brought that kind of I wouldn't say naivety but I suppose uh, lack of fear yeah. uh, of losing and even you know that careless kind of a swagger yeah, into yeah. games like that because yeah. it's no big deal whereas you, you know yourself as you get older mm. um, it kind of plays more in the mind yeah. Do you know? you're, not, you're a manager that's not afraid to take a chance on you like especially there James probably the youngest captain in the country at 19 years of age yeah. their thoughts around that like picking James as captain like where most managers probably would have picked a lad maybe in his 30s um, yeah but um, as you see this guy's face he never stops smiling even when he's getting given out to um, which is very rarely in fairness to him but um, no you have to give you the chance do you know if, if, you, if you look at the breakdown of our team at the minute um I think there's what there's maybe about three or four of our starters or actually probably five of our starters are under the age of twenty and it's probably seven or eight are under the age of twenty two. So I mean that's that's serious going for for an intercounty setup like to have seven year of starting fifteen of maybe the last two games who um who are under that age and, and I suppose that you know goes to show you maybe the, the depth that we have coming in at the minute. Um so yeah, it's very healthy. For yourself, James, being captain, have you felt any pressure having that title on you this year? Ah, I suppose. I haven't really passed much hate of it, to be honest. Like, if you want to really come into games or stuff like that, people would say to you, oh, captain, or something, something like that. Like, but ah, I wouldn't really pass much hate of it now, to be honest with you. And I've seen there, your second game was against Tyrone. Like, that was a tough game to be going into against Tyrone, who would have fancied probably to beat Sligo. 
but uh, you had a bit of a hectic day that day. You had two games in the one day, playing for Sligo and then going on playing for your club. How did how did all that work out? I suppose I wouldn't really have passed much either coming up until the week before, until we had played loud and after that we had the semi-final at the Benson Cup on the Sunday. So it was on early Sunday when I realised that we'd have the two games on Saturday after we'd won. So ah, I didn't really pass much either, just kind of said, sure, feck it, have to play them both. Like. Yeah, he didn't pass much either, he didn't. <laughs> All right, yeah, he kept it very quiet, he said not, not much to me about it. I, I missed that fixture, but fair play to him. Now, but look, I'd be saying, see the likes of Jamesy and um, the young fan is Kevin O'Kendy, Rory McHugh, Niall Feely, Kieran Pryor, all them young lads. Like Jamesy, Pryor and Feely, I think it was long as Shane Brennan came in last year, you know, first year ever playing in senior in the county and they, they played in the Cook Park final. So, I mean, going forward, like these lads, well, touch wood, they've, they've long careers ahead of them. And, you know, if that, getting that experience now at this age, and I'm not being patronising here by any um, means, but like it, it can only be good for them going forward you know because okay it's they're having the good days now whatever else and you know but going forward now they'll, they'll learn from what they're they're so, so, so quick at learning yeah. and when a bad day comes they seem to just be able to reverse it back again yeah. you know which is it's it's brilliant for us as a management team but it's it's great for them going forward now because James has an idea of where we came from in terms of the mar and what was there and, and they're noticing the difference in the standards a massive experience you know so um but they deserve it every, every bit of it like they're, they're a great bunch of young fellas so. it's, it's been a great year so far for you i know your round three game you managed to get a draw against mayo that day in very tough conditions and then you played warwickshire in the semi-final got over that day but going back to the league final you know you faced longford that day were probably expected to win that game by a few people didn't happen when after extra time longford won that game your thoughts looking back on that was that maybe was that maybe a kick you needed just to go into the Nicky Rackard Cup saying okay maybe there's still a bit of work to be done and that the last few months we're not we're not in dreamland yeah yeah I, I, I don't know um, I think look I think we've, we've, we've come back from it and it's definitely yeah it could have been the kick we needed I don't know but I know that we did play on from there and the lads kind of gave it all after that because it was disappointing um, like I don't know how James feels about that. I was I was just baffled that day because everything seemed to go wrong for us, really, didn't it? Nothing. I suppose looking back, it was probably the worst game we've played all year, including from challenge matches and everything. It was probably the worst performance we put in. Like, so I suppose that was probably the lowest point of the year, kind of not getting promoted in the league for sure. And I know yourself, Dahi, you weren't too happy with the the pitch that day. Is that something you were seeing throughout the league, maybe? That the pitches weren't up to the standard just because it's not Division 1A or it's Division 1B, that the pitches aren't to what they should be, to the levels they should be? Um, well, I wouldn't say all of them now because our home games were, were in up in Ballydugan and St Mary's here and the pitch was in top nick. It was absolutely brilliant. I think James would agree with me on that when it came down. So for, for our home games, they were, they were, it was excellent. Um, Leitrim in Avant Garden, Sean McGerrard, that wasn't a great nick that, that day but um, look you, you play on it uh, I suppose when it came like Pierce Park was, was in great nick but they put it then on we, the, the final obviously up in, in the Connock Centre of Excellence and um, I mean James will tell you or himself like uh, it was rotten weather um, they'd obviously spiked the, the pitch the back pitch that day and but the, there was tractor tyre marks James, you remember that? Yeah, yeah it was but what like when in the deed it was up near the, the dressing rooms. I, I was more disappointed for the supporters where because of the bad weather, it was hailstones, it was stormy, etc. They were up at the, at the emergency exit doors, bunch like sardines, looking down on the game. Facilities weren't there for them. And I mean, if you're going to be realistic and be honest, and I'm probably not going to make any friends in this going forward, we're all talking about developing hurling in the lower tiers or whatever else. You know, you have to play in the stadiums. If you're going to play a National League final, play in the stadium. Simple as that. There's many of them around the country. Do you know? And okay, the weather hadn't been good this this spring or whatever else. But I, I remember at the time when our man were playing Roscommon. I can't remember where it was being played. I, I thought we were going to go for a double header with them. I thought it made would have made the most sense because generally the central area from them for them would have been a Brewster or a Breffney. I know Breffney wasn't available at the time. But it would have made so much more sense, and if you thought about it collectively, you would have, you would have had 
uh, four different groups of supporters watching two games. Do you know? So look, I don't make the decisions. Um, I'm only on the ground, but I was disappointed um, for the league final. I'm not saying it's the reason we didn't win it. We didn't deserve it on the day long for we were the better team. We didn't click, but it certainly didn't help, help our game. Um, we, we, we're a fast-paced team, and we love to get the ball moving quickly. So, you know, it, it wouldn't those types of conditions and pitches wouldn't suit our type of game. And, and if you ask any of the teams, say, in, in the ring or even in the record, they, they love the quick pitches, like. You know, because the, the level that you're looking to attain to or to reach, it's it's all about moving the ball quicker and getting getting the brain ticking quicker, etc. As you were saying, there the lower tier teams are the GAA are they doing enough to help the, the weaker counties in hurling to develop them on like, you know, like we've seen Paul Cody come yeah. out there during the week as to the GAA what they need to do to help the weaker counties up in terms of funding, in terms of coaches. I know you have. Derek Cox there doing great work around the county yeah. but is there more people needed to help Sligo Hurling reach the next level? Um, well Dara's the GPO at the minute for Hurling but he's also covering Leitrim mm. so uh, we have six, seven uh, Hurling clubs in Sligo at the minute playing a senior level we have, I think you can correct me if I'm wrong here, now, ten underage clubs and then you have probably two to four senior clubs in, in Leitrim in any given year and they're looking to build on it too so okay, you compare that to Carlo, uh, where they've got four senior hurling clubs at the minute, and they definitely have more than one GPO. I think, or I think there might be one GPO per club. Uh, so yeah, there's probably disparity there amongst amongst counties when it comes to that. But like, I I would be thinking that if you know Touchwood, if if we if we do well next Saturday and things work out well for us. That if you if you're operating at Christie Ring level, that you'd be expecting to have more funding and investment from um, provincial councils to to get hurling on the rise in in places like Connacht and Ulster. Do you know? Just as you were saying, you're talking about clubs. I know Kerry. When you look at them, they have eight senior hurling clubs mm. playing in the Joe McDonough potentially. Maybe in the next year or two, they might say Lee McCarthy yeah. is realistic. Yeah. Like they have eight senior clubs. Sligo have seven senior clubs. Mm -hmm. So there is, but there is potential there for Sligo to go on to bigger heights, possibly, if the right work is done Absolutely, from the yeah. bottom up. Yeah. For yourself, James, as a Sligo hurler, what's it like being a Sligo hurler? Like, if you go, like I know you're down in college, down in Limerick. When you mention to a Limerick lad, "Oh, I'm a Sligo hurler," what sort of reaction do you get? I suppose to play hurling in Sligo. Did it? That's the, do you yeah. say? But I suppose like. Once you get playing with them, then like they realise that you can play hurling and stuff like that. But I suppose even just around the county, Sligo would be a predominantly footballing county, so like hurling wouldn't get the same publicity or coverage as football would. Now I know it's changed the last few weeks with us doing well and stuff, but I suppose until you kind of change the culture in the county that it's kind of both cause and both them can be even, it's probably not going to change until that. Like really, Sligo is a footballing county. I suppose as everyone would 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 say. And like growing up, like how was it that James Weir decided? Do you know what I'm going to play hurling? I suppose, I suppose Michael Gordon, Paul Cam, and Tom Evans, they'd have probably been the first three that would have started out our own area. Say maybe eights and tens, and we kind of just continued up through the ages and went to a couple of failures, and went to a couple of Connacht's as well. Like so, that's where we really started at home with kind of them three lads. So, kind of carried on since. Like for yourself, I know you what, two national failure medals you have. Uh, yeah, I think. Like, how important? How important was that for you to be playing against lads from other counties, like sort of bigger tier counties like Tipperary, Kilkenny, facing them lads, and then eventually going on to win a national medal? Yeah, I suppose. Like, we'd have always kind of went away to different counties like Dublin, Galway, played like so Turlock, Moore, Clarin Bridge, like so. They'd have always been competing for Division One, so we thought like if we go to them, compete against them, we could compete against like Division Four or Five teams. So. That kind of gave us an indication we were at in terms of Ireland. Like, so we'd bridge us down a couple of times from Dublin. They'd have won the fail of the year, we won it in Dublin as well. So we played them a couple of times. So that kind of gave us mark of where we needed to be, like, and what their touch was like compared to ours and stuff like that. You've been involved with the under 17 teams there a few, a few years ago. Yeah. What have you noticed um, about Sligo Underage Ireland the last few years in terms of how it's developed? Um. I think the big one was when Benny Kenny kind of got uh, 
when Benny Kenny came in from, from Galway, he was uh, hired as the GPO at the time. And um, he basically was the, the catalyst for everything that's gone on. And Darrow's then brought it now to, to another level as well again too. But it's like James saying, it's all from the clubs. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Last year, James, I know, like 2018, like fantastic year for Sligo. And you're yeah. saying to yourself, how can you top that? And, you know, could well top that this weekend. We don't know yet. But for yourself, James, looking back on last year, Larry Mark Cup, Player of the Year, you know, like going to the All Star night, meeting big, big players like Joe Canning and all that. I know your mum and dad got to to meet Joe. Like for you, how did you sum up last year? I suppose I didn't really pass much hate of him until maybe around Christmas time, where you weren't really at much. So I suppose it was grand. Like I suppose the big thing was getting to Pro Park and winning. Like that was probably the big thing. Like everyone's dream is to get to Pro Park and win a final, and we've done that. So. Was, that was probably the biggest point of the year. I suppose there's not much people from around Temple Boy from more west have got no. that have got to walk up the steps of the Hogan stand. For you, Dahi, the experience of having to play in Crow Park last year, how big of a factor is that now for the weekend? Um, yeah, yeah, I don't think it's going to make much of a difference, to be honest. It's just a matter of getting things right with the warm-up and the lads just take take in the atmosphere. Do you know, as I said earlier on, like the thing about James and, and the likes of the, the younger lads, they to have... A final on, under their belt now, so it's not going to be any big deal to them. <laughs> about the game itself, like we're going in as underdogs, there's, there's no two ways about it. I mean, our man are a savage side, and and um, like I've, I've been in touch with Paddy throughout the year, their manager, Paddy O'Connor, and he's a he's a good guy, and um, he's really been doing a bit of a rebuilding job there. Um, I suppose over the last twelve months, and um, you know they, I suppose they're they're used to kind of functioning at a at a Christy Ring level, so. And they have they've experienced the finals too. So, look, it's going to be a cracking game. <laughs> um, I think it's going to be very physical. And um, we'll, we'll look, we'll see how it is. But look, the lads have put in a great year. As I've been saying, all there's no pressure at all. You know, they've they've, they've done they've done themselves, done their county proud. They've, they've put the hard work in, and, and all they can do on the day is the best. That's that's the way we're looking at it. One thing I was looking at there this year, what you've done with the team strength and conditioning plus the nutrition you've looked to maybe how would you say like improve that this year Mm -hmm. your thoughts around that what what was missing maybe last year the the, the last few years that you felt maybe there was more emphasis needed to be put on that um well i think when james came into last year along the younger lads it was probably the first year that was a proper strength and conditioning program and the nutritional program um kind of in place for for sligo hurlers and I'm not taking it away from the last uh, few regimes or whatever else, but just, um, I suppose lads were doing their gym work, but it wasn't collective. Mm. So we, we kind of, look, we, we noticed there was a niche there for, you're talking about the psychological end of things and management and training. We, you know, you, you kind of have to bring the group together as with any team, so that the struggle in terms of getting fit and gym sessions and all that is done together as a unit. Um, so the lads were in maybe two, three times a week uh, for the younger lads, I suppose we're reaping the benefits of that from last year now because with any strength and condition program, particularly with lads coming from 18, 19 years of age, you know it, it takes two to three years. I mean, we've a, we've a joker in the squad at the minute, um, um, Shane Brennan, and you know the big thing about Shane and James Gil Titus, we're, we're always m- messing about and winding him up about his mu- his muscle mass, but like it's, but you know for certain players at that age coming up, it could be a two or three year project. Do you know so? The difference with it is we have people now who are well qualified in doing the work. Um, Aoife Clancy was is our nutritionist this year. She's top top dog at her job. She's brilliant at it. Sean Flannery brought in the strength and conditioning program last year when we were pushing for the mar. The same two have been in this year. Nothing really has changed. But the fact is, you're, they're twenty. The lads are twenty four months at it now, so they've built up over that time. And I suppose if you le- look at some of the more senior players, um, they're much leaner. Mm. Um, definitely, which is obviously added to the paces of the squad mm. or the team, but like it, it's, how would I put it? It's not rocket science. Yeah, I suppose it's one thing. Like maybe like like compare yourselves to Limerick. Mm. Like maybe the intensity or something that mightn't be the same. But when it comes to physique and that, there's no real argument. You can level them on that on that side of the field, surely. <laughs> yeah, well, I do think that we're that in terms of fitness, we're we're in, we're in a great place. Um, I think the one place that w- that were different from in terms of any other team in Ireland uh, that are operating McCarthy, should I say, and even Joe McDonough and Ring is it's just that quickness of, of, of the of the game and the quickness of reaction 
and so and that's all to do it up here and, and again part of the project is we you're gonna to have to build to that level it doesn't come after a year or two you know and that's that's part of the I suppose of, of the, the, the long-term plan that I would have um, forever long I'm going to be here is that we, we keep working on that and the lads will eventually kind of get to a stage then where particularly uh, James uh, buddies like the younger fellas in the squad where you know it'll just be part of the psychology that things have to be done quick yeah. and quicker and quicker and quicker because that, that's the only difference between the levels for yourself so, James in terms of playing in the Larry Martin and Nicky Rackard Cup what have you noticed uh, in terms of difference I suppose the main difference would be like the speed of the games and stuff like you don't have that say, second or two extra that you had in Larry Maher like everything everything about a 90 mile an hour there'd be no stoppage it's just damn all free like if you get a free earn and it's not maybe towards like last year you get these dodgy frees that everyone would be arguing of this year it's kind of way more like the hurling you see in Lee McCarthy like it's bait away and sure if you win your free you earn it like that sort yeah, of way yeah. like. when you walked out into Crow Park last year what were the butterflies inside inside like were they all over the place or? Uh, I suppose it's a big it's a big spot like yeah. it's huge like when you look around you see all the big seats and all that it's kind of towering around you like you don't know what to expect but kind of once you get playing then you don't really pass much aid like you're kind of block out everything around you and you just focus on the game really like. you were talking about the, um, the, the plan the plan for Sligo the aim for Sligo hurling what do we think five years time maybe what would be the objective or maybe in ten years time for Sligo hurling well, the way the underage is going now, if we can keep it going the way it's going, but it's going to take a serious amount of investment. Um, I know you're involved, you're teaching in, in the Mercy College. Yeah, yeah. I just probably, in, is there any camogie or anything? There, there isn't, no, 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 not at all. But, but there, are, there are around like Summer Hill, obviously. Yeah, they I mean, won a hurling title there. They won a hurling title, you know, that's a huge, that's like that's huge for Sligo. It's massive, yeah. So, do you think maybe the schools develop from there into the clubs and then? Well, it's, uh, in fairness to, to James's club, Eastie St. Farns, I think they've laid at underage level, they've laid the kind of foundation for how you should really build a club at youth level. I mean, the likes of Michael Gordon and them would have taken James's crew to, um, to, to the bigger counties to play clubs and challenge games however many times a year it happened. But that gave James and, and those lads kind of the... I suppose the incentive to push on in, in the local Sligo Championship and then the involvement then in Connacht too would have been in those Connacht competitions would have been massive for them so like you look at the likes of say the, the Tawn League or the Tawn Oak League and that I think they're brilliant opportunities for, for the minor counties to send their clubs to that and clubs should be available of those opportunities but it's like everyone else it's hard to get volunteers on the ground you know and we're very lucky the way the setup is at the minute that we have probably five or six people who are involved in the backroom staff who are volunteering their time, no expenses, nothing like that. They're doing it because they want to be there. Do you know? And um, we're lucky in that regard because there's very few inter-county teams that would have that. So, um, you know, there's, there's a want there uh, from from the backroom staff for these lads to, to do well. And the lads, I, I know then, the lads pick up on it. But I suppose it adds then to kind of that, that kind of togetherness and just that unity that we talk about. We talk about every night of training, like um, like we're a small community here in Sligo, and, and you know there's a huge togetherness now, particularly this year after last year that people feel that you know you know there's something special going on. So win lose or draw next Saturday, it's been it's been a great year. J James, just talk us through your club there, you say in Farnans. I know it only set up in 2009. You have 60 players at underage, 24 at senior level, and I know you're involved coaching with the club as well. Like for you. What are you seeing? How how do you find it helping out the younger the younger kids? Are they enjoying hurling? Yeah, I suppose they are. You see them over there this morning, like they're mad to go. Like they're over there messing with balls, driving them around the place, hitting them at each other and everything. Like so, I suppose kind of seeing us involved with the Sligo team and stuff has kind of got them more into it. Like because to see us playing, then they're kind of more enthused by it. Like so, we started out maybe a year and a half ago. Kind of me and Rory, and there was only maybe two or three. And by last summer about maybe 20 kids like so in the space of three or four months we grew up by about 17 like so then as the numbers got big we kind of got more people involved so this year there's about six of us coaching now so say from under eights up to 14 so I, I remember this would have been probably 10 years ago i was at a club game in sligo and like myself and the father went along and i brought the hurley with me like and um i can't remember what who was playing now i think it could have been in castle connor but I brought the hurl with me anyway 
and there was a few people looking at me saying, what's this lad bringing a hurley for? Like, And then one, li- one young lad came up looking at me like in amazement, saying he wanted to go. There he is now sitting beside me. Oh, James right. Ware, so, <laughs> like, it's great to see like, that he's come on these last few years. Yeah, absolutely. <coughs> and now he's, now he's, like, he's lifted the Larry Mark, Captain of Sligo. Like, yeah. It's a huge achievement, I know, for James. It's massive, but I've always felt that the hurling in Sligo has been underrated. Okay, so you take what's, what's going on, say, just an example as Eastie Farns have done in underage in the last few years. But you've got to remember, there's, there's four Connacht Junior Championships in Colnery, just St. Joseph's as well. And, um, I mean, that's no mean feat. You know, they've played in all Ireland semi finals at junior level, etc., and beaten Galway teams in that in, in those day, junior kind of finals as well too. So I mean, the, the hurling's always been here. I, maybe it's just that, you know, there's been that bit of confidence when it's come to the senior team and, and turn what they've achieved at club level into the senior team now. And do you know, it's it's great to see it, you know. So But I tell you something as well. Just listen to you listening to hear that he like you have great enthusiasm for the game, but you have great enthusiasm for Sligo hurling. And like it's people like you, I suppose, hurling needs to develop these weaker counties to reach, to actually not even reach, but to know that they actually can get to a level to play against the big Absolutely, teams. Absolutely, yeah, yeah. And do you know the beauty about all, all of our hurlers and most of them anyway, because you know, they all play football as well. Yeah. Do you know, so they're, they're, they're dual players. Do you know, and there's an, there's an element where you have to man manage that too. But I, I, I love the fact that that is the case because it goes to show you then that it, that it can be done. Now, obviously, when you're coming to like some McCarthy level and that type of stuff, it's a different mm-hmm. ballgame altogether. But yeah, well, know, Jared O'Kelly, Kelly Lynch Jared, there last year. Mikey Gordon, Rory McHugh is playing for the under 20s today against their own. Um, James, he plays football. There's, there's a host of lads who are playing football. But then to go back to the most important thing then, and I've said it to the lads too, is the responsibility they have to the eight and the nine year olds when it comes to going back to their clubs. And teaching them, and if if you look, all the lads from Eastie Farns are, are doing underage. The lads with Clara are doing underage. I know they're right this morning doing it. All the Callery players, the nine or ten of them involved in the squad, they're all working in underage in the clubs. So you, the lads aren't only given uh, to the county, but they're given back to the younger folk as well too. And you know, it's as hard. It's all about community. It's all about that involvement where people feel part of uh, the setup. And you like you can remember back as an eight or nine year old. In tip, if you had an own Kelly or a Lar Corbett or someone coming yeah, down, yeah. Uh, or O'Shea coming down to train you, do you know it, it's it, it spurs them on, it gives them that confidence to play at the next level. So, like, yeah, look, yeah, I'm only a cog in the wheel here now, do you know, and these are the lads that do the business yeah. on and off the field. I'm only there just to make sure that I know you brought get the chance. You brought Joe Connolly into the into the team for a talk one of, one one of the nights there, like. What was your thoughts about bringing Joe in? Like, cause maybe I don't know, James. Would you have known who Joe was? Maybe. Um, not really. The first time I probably met him was that night. We were coming up from training and we pulled in just to get a cup of tea and we met him with our trainer, Colin Lamar from Galway. What What was Joe saying to you that night? Like, was there anything specific that you just said? Yeah, this this lad's the bit. This I need to really listen to what this lad is saying because he like this is a legend here on front of me. Yeah, I suppose like I wouldn't really have remembered him much playing like because I was when I've been born at that stage. But I suppose just his insight to stuff and what it was like back then, like and all the players he'd have played with. He played from played with some serious players like Tony Keady and them lads. So I suppose just the experience and his thoughts and stuff like. So like, only as I say, only a few days left to the final. How do you how do you gear up now these next few days? Um, well, I would look at your training last night. Very good session, lads. Put a hard session in. Same again tomorrow morning. Um, oh, look, uh, it's it's all about the build up. Like it's for James, you know, like we had a chat before he came in here. It's it's all about staying relaxed, and you've just got to treat it as a another seventy minutes, and and that's all it is. And and the beauty about it is, and the Armagh lads we've seen this themselves too, is that they've great experience at Croke Park, probably better experience in terms of winning in it than we do. So. You know the lads are going lovely and relaxed. They've, they've nothing to fear, and so there's no pressure on us, and and it's, and it's the bear street because nobody's expected us to get this far, and and that's the way it's going to be. So, I'm I'm relaxed about it. James, you never relaxed about it. You do their best, and that's all yeah. they can do. 